I made an epic Hulk transformation effect in Blender. To get started, I needed two meshes, a normal human mesh and a Hulk mesh. I used a free male base mesh model from iClone, which comes with some shape keys that I could use for facial animations. For the Hulk, I used a mesh from Sketchfab. Although it's a bit cartoonish, it's fine for testing out the morphing effect. I removed its hair and pants and there was nothing underneath. So I gave it something to keep the body shape. To make the morph work as effectively as possible, both meshes needed to be in somewhat similar size. So I scaled down the Hulk mesh to fit the human size and adjust the human base mesh pose to be similar to the Hulk one. I separated the eyelashes and this from the body mesh. I exported the body mesh in OBJ format and called it base mesh. Exported the Hulk mesh as well. Always make sure to apply the scale and rotation before exporting. Next I open Faceform Wrap, an industry leading topology transfer tool that you can use to create digital doubles. It's a paid application but you can start for free with the trial version. They offer plenty of sample projects and base meshes. but I started from scratch. In the graph, I added a load jump to node, called it base mesh, then selected the exported human mesh from here. To make working in the viewport easier, I scaled this up 10 times. I added another load jump to node, called it Hulk, and imported the Hulk mesh. I scaled it 10 times as well. Since I had a texture for the Hulk mesh, I added a load image node, plugged it into here and wrote that texture as well. To start the morphing process, I added a fast wrapping node, connect the base mesh to the first socket and the half mesh to the second, and click the compute button to begin the wrapping process. The initial results were okay for the torso and head, but I needed to manually guide the process by telling it which point goes to pair. For that, I added a select point pairs node, connected the two meshes and the output to the fast wrapping node. In the visual editor, I could view both meshes at once. Then all I have to do is add a point in the base mesh and mark where that point needs to go in the half mesh. I continued this process around the head, marking places like nose, mouth and eyes. I also added a few points on the torso. Select the fast wrapping node and hit compute. Results were much improved. Following this process, I added more points to the mesh and computed it. Repeated the process until I found something I was happy with. After that, I added a wrapping node instead of fast wrapping node. Plug the inputs and hit compute. As the name suggested, this one took a bit more time to calculate but did a better job. In the end, I ended up using both of them like this. To transfer the hull texture into the base mesh, I used the transfer texture node followed by the extrapolate image node. Used a set texture node to add it to the morph mesh. And it looked like this. The face looked correct but the rest didn't. Turned out this was due to our base mesh using Udim texture tiles. I couldn't figure out a way to make Udim textures work in wrap but when I changed this U value to 1, it shifted the UV tile and the torso was working. This way I typed 0 to 4 to make all the 5 UDIM tiles work. To export this morph mesh, I used a save jump to node and for the texture I used save image node, changing the U value each time to get all 5 textures out. Back in Blender, I imported the morph base mesh and scaled it down 10 times to its original size. Since the original base mesh and the morph base mesh had the exact same number of verses, I could easily create a shape key from the Hulk morph mesh. I applied the rotation and scale first. Then I selected the Hulk mesh, selected the base mesh, went to its shape keys, clicked the arrow and used join as shapes. It wasn't working on the fingers. When I disabled the armature, you can see it worked. So. To fix this, first I needed to apply the armature with its current pose. But I couldn't do it because of the shape keys. And I couldn't just delete the shape keys either because 
I need them for animations. So I duplicated the mesh, gave it a suffix shape keys to easily identify it. I deleted all the shape keys in the original mesh and then applied the armature. To bring back the deleted shape keys from the duplicated mesh, I used this free add-on called Mesh Data Transfer. I selected the original mesh, chose shape keys in the mesh data transfer section, selected the duplicated mesh as the source, set the search method to vertex ID and hit transfer mesh data. Immediately all the shape keys were copied to the original mesh. I could then add the hulk mesh as a shape key. And this time it worked nicely. For other meshes like the tongue and teeth, I joined them into one and repeated the process to keep the current pose and shape keys. Since I didn't create any morphs for these objects, I made a new shape key and in edit mode moved them into the position where I thought they should be when the hulk is fully formed. I tried to get them as close as possible. After that, all I had to do was create keyframes for the half morph shape key to go from 0 to 1. And I had the half transformation effect. I got the morph effect I was after, so it was time to work this into an animation. I imported the character mesh into a new project and used Autoric Pro to create a new armature. I created a control rig and bound it to the mesh. Then I started animating the character, making a rough animation for the transformation scene. I adjust the timing and scaled up the character using the rig since the Hulk is much bigger and taller than the human counterpart. After that I animated the Hulk morph shape key and it worked nicely. I added a flow and a camera to get a better idea of the scene. I tweaked the animation to make it smoother with the morphing. To sell the morphing effect a bit more, I wanted to add trousers to the character and make it tear during the morphing. I used a male pants asset from Bystead Cloth Builder a free add-on for making character clothing. I ran the simulation and made a few adjustments to fit the character. After that, I transferred the vertex weight data from the character mesh to the trouser to animate it with the character. I wanted to keep the upper part of the trousers without tearing. They needed to stretch into hull somehow. Just like before, I made a new shape key for the trousers scaling the upper part of the mesh to fit the Hulk's body. To create the tearing effect, I used the knife tool to cut areas where I wanted the trousers to split. I hit Alt M to bring up this menu and split the edges. I tried different methods to create the tearing effect, but none of them gave me the desired results. Eventually, I use the same technique I used for the crumbling effect in an earlier tutorial. I used a vertex weight proximity modifier and an empty sphere to animate the pinned vertex group of the cloth. This gave me a good starting point for the simulation. I decided to replace the vertex proximity modifier with a geometry node setup to create a more advanced version of this. I made a mask from the empty sphere and updated it every frame using simulation nodes. I added these nodes at the beginning to make this work with the current animation and shape keys. I inverted the attribute mask and output it, naming it the same as the pin group. This allowed me to treat it as a vertex group. I added a few more splits and reanimated the sphere to fit the animation better. To eliminate the spherical shape and add more unevenness to the mask, I used a noise texture inside the jump to node setup. This worked perfectly. 
Enabling the dynamic mesh option helps the cloth simulation adjust to the shape key deformation, giving me excellent results. Once I was happy with the simulation, I baked both the simulation setup and the cloth simulation. I used the shape keys from the base mesh to add facial expression to the character. For the material, I brought in the textures exported from wrap and used a color mix node to add them to the material. I used the same texture to adjust the roughness and added some subsurface scattering. I repeated the process for all the materials. To make the mix value dynamically updated with the transformation, I link it to the Hulk Morph Shape Key. I went to the Shape Key, right click on the Shape Key value, selected Copy as New Driver and paste it in the Color Mix Nodes factor. I repeated this for the other materials as well. This linked the values so when the human character morphed into the Hulk, it automatically blended in the Hulk textures. For the hair, I used the Geometry Nodes hair system in Blender which worked well with the morph animation. I combed the guide hairs, reduced their length, added child hairs, applied some noise, random trimming and added a bit of clumping to make the Hulk's hair. And that's how I made this Hulk transformation effect in Blender. I think this turned out pretty well. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, comment your thoughts and questions below and huge thanks to these amazing individuals. Until the next video, take a look at how I made this abstract trail effect in Blender step by step. Thanks for watching.